All right, so I've had several questions, and I'm just going to, I'm not going to draw anything on the board tonight. I don't have anything to show you. I'm just going to try to talk you to, through this as best that I can. But I get this question a lot, so I figured I'd go ahead and address it, and it um, is something that could really help a lot of people, I think. Um, and that's how to get... I, I look at a bunch of tune-ups and I find little problems. I just did it this past weekend with a car that really shouldn't have been fighting to get up on the two-step, but it was kind of fighting to get up on the two-step. Um, it was It's kind of a small cubic inch. The turbo is not super big, but it's a little big for the combination, um, but it really should not pose any kind of problem. It was all in a tune-up that I found. So I just want to kind of talk to everybody about how to get a turbo car that may be small cubic inches with a bigger turbo to get it to the two-step where it's really going to start making some boost at. I see a lot of people um, really don't pay enough attention or play enough with the numbers in the area between idle and where you're going to be at on the two-step to really make that transition very smooth. Um, I, I find a lot of... Um, fuel maps to be pretty lean through that area. And I don't know if people are trying to lean them up. So that way the motor's a little crisper to try to get to the two-step. Um, and that's, you know, it's kind of a double-edged sword right through there, but I'm gonna tell you how I do it. And it really seems to work out very good because even though my motors may not be as crisp and snappy from idle to when the torque converter starts grabbing it, it really starts to help progress it past that point. And that's really what we're trying to overcome is that hump where the torque converter grabs the motor and really kind of wants to hold it down from making any more RPM. So what I generally do is I will sit in the car, right? And I'll grab the trans brake button, okay? And then I start just kind of playing with the throttle. I'll let it get 1500 RPM in it, 2000 RPM in it, 2500 RPM in it. And I just watch AFRs and I just kind of feel what the motor's doing, right? And I'll go in and put a pretty aggressive timing number in it. Like, um, I think the car that I worked with this past weekend liked really like 34 degrees during that area. Um, so I'll put a pretty aggressive timing number in there and then I kind of start watching AFR, right? And I'll start piling fuel in it till it starts really bogging the motor down. And then I'll back it back up till the motor gets kind of crisp again. So like on gasoline or on um, E85, you may even be in like the 11.0 to 11.2 range during this period. And a lot of people go, well, that Rob, that's making the motor real fat and lazy during that area and we're trying to overcome. Yeah, let me tell you what that's doing though. Anytime you put more fuel in the motor than what it's actually gonna use, it's gonna spit a lot of that out the exhaust, right? And when you do that, it creates a lot of heat in the exhaust. And what's happening when you're trying to get up on the two-step is all of those pipes, especially if the pipes are very long, they're kind of absorbing the heat, acting like a radiator, getting that stuff out of there, right? So even though you may have enough exhaust um, volume to spin the turbo, all of that piping's kind of absorbing it back out of it, you know? And, it, and I talk about that and it's very minuscule kind of numbers that happens on, but it does kind of play a part in getting the turbo up and rolling. So adding that extra fuel allows that what comes out of the cylinder head to still have a lot of heat in it going through whatever hot side piping you have going into the exhaust side of the turbo, okay? So that's kind of getting, we get the motor up to where it lays against the torque converter, and then that extra fuel starts helping it make boost sooner to overcome the torque converter to get to the two-step, okay? Now, once you make it to the two-step, wherever it may be set at, Depending on how you have your ECU set up, I really, I focus a lot with Holly EFI, so I kind of really know how it works very well. But there's different ways you can set your two-step rev limiter up. And one is high-low, one is fuel only, one is spark high only, and there's a couple other options in there. Spark high only is my preferred way to do that, and I'll tell you why. Spark high only allows the engine to kind of lay up against whatever RPM it is. So let's say we set the two-step at 4,000 RPM. Instead of it going, cutting the motor off at 4,000 RPM and then cutting it back on at 3,900, 
it's gonna allow the motor to kind of lay up against 4,000 RPM. So it's only gonna shut off whatever cylinders are needed to kind of keep that motor at 4,000 RPM instead of just shutting the whole thing down and then letting it come back, shutting it down and letting it come back. So now we keep all the momentum in the engine. So it's laid up against 4,000 and it's only cutting the spark off that it needs. And then when it cuts that spark off, it drops that extra fuel into the hot side of the turbo system. When that happens, you get that kind of pop sound. Some people call it cannon fire or whatever. You're just lighting the raw fuel on the exhaust side. Once you lay up against whatever the two-step is with Spark High only activated, um, that really starts getting the turbo rolling. If for whatever reason you need some more after that, I try to get three to five PSI in the engine before I start pulling any timing out, but you can go in and make an advanced table or you can go into the, the main timing table and like at five pounds of boost, 3,900 to 4,100 RPM, you can go in there and start yanking timing out. Like I may start with like eight degrees or 10 degrees. And like once it makes five pounds or like eight pounds, I might jerk out eight to 10 degrees. And then it's really gonna make the next five or six pounds pretty quick. And then whenever, if I wanted to be at 15 pounds and at 16 pounds, I put all the timing back in. So you just want to kind of let the motor be a little fat, put enough timing in it to where it's still crisp, to where it'll get up to where it's laying against the torque converter. Then it's going to start making a little boost to help overcome that. And then when it gets to the two-step, we want to choose the two-step um, strategy that's going to allow the motor to stay at that RPM and only only um, turn off whatever cylinders by spark that it needs to to hold it there. Um, if you start using this strategy, you're gonna see your car come to life a lot faster, be a lot smoother, a lot quicker to stage, a lot more consistent staging, um, and it'll be a lot more enjoyable for you to go to the racetrack instead of having to sit on the two-step for like 15 seconds and wait for the damn thing to build boost. Um, and most of the time you can really overcome about any torque converter unless it's just like way outside the realm of what should be in that combination. Um, and you're going to recognize that not only in that, but how it performs down the racetrack. Um, but you will really be able to kind of overcome about any torque converter for engine and turbo combination, uh, that you can put out there. You know, we run, we run the tightest. Uh, torque converter that PTC makes with a 12-0 in our car um, and we have no problem whatsoever getting to the two-step. So if you'll use that strategy, I promise it'll help. Uh, some people are going to disagree with that, but I fix a lot of cars that struggle getting to the two-step and um, this is a way to kind of help fix that.